Hello, how's it going? I hope the rain isn't too loud. Um, I wanted to talk about why I first started using Linux because it's actually kind of a dumb story. Um, and I have a couple takeaways from it for new users. Um, so I was in high school at the time and I really wanted a Razer laptop uh, because this was back when the laptops from Razer were relatively new. You know, gaming laptops as a whole were uh, not, not that old. You know, it was a pretty new concept, um, and I really wanted one. Um, and I actually got my first job at the time just so I could save up and afford one, and I finally did save up and afford it. Um, and I, I got the laptop, and it was great for like two months. Um, but then I started getting blue screens. Uh, and this was Windows 7, but I mean, blue screens are, you know, kind of notoriously the same no matter the Windows version, where um, especially if you are somebody who does not know the operating system well, uh, or you don't know computers well, it's going to be pretty hard to troubleshoot. And I had absolutely no knowledge of computers. I mean, I knew I wanted the Razer laptop because it had an NVIDIA GPU, and that was pretty much the extent of my knowledge. Um, so anyways, I started trying to figure out, okay, what is causing these blue screens? Because it was multiple times a day, so uh, it was pretty, it was making the laptop pretty unusable. I was trying to figure out what was causing the blue screens, um, and I finally came across a forum thread uh, talking about somebody who had a pretty similar issue. Um, like, they had posted, and they said, you know, it was uh, crashes multiple times a day, different blue screen error messages every time, no clue what they're pointing to, and they had actually found a solution to the issue, which was that they had bad blocks in their RAM sticks. Um, now, I didn't really have anything else to go off of, and that sounded, you know, the way they were describing it sounded pretty similar to my issue, so I figured, okay, that's my issue. Um, and I had to figure out, you know, what actually is RAM, what is memory? I knew my laptop had a certain amount of it, but I didn't know, you know, what it did or anything. Um, so I finally sort of got started researching that, um, and I came across a post talking about how Linux handles memory management differently than Windows. Um, and it was sort of, you know, going through how it handles it differently, and it came to the conclusion Linux does it better than Windows, um, which is, you know, true. Like, current day me agrees uh, Linux does it better than Windows, but I didn't understand, you know, what the post was saying at the time, and I sort of took that to mean, okay, it's possible that just switching to Linux will magically cure my RAM issue here, um, because, you know, I didn't, I didn't fully understand at all that, like, bad blocks in RAM is a hardware issue, right? Switching operating systems is not magically going to fix that. Um, but I didn't know that at the time, so I put Ubuntu on a USB stick, I booted it up, I tried it for a couple hours, and then I installed it. And actually, it did, uh, at least in my view, fix the issue. Um, I installed it and it was fine for about two days. Um, I didn't get any crashes. Um, and I had thought, you know, okay, Linux actually just fixed my issue. Um, now, it didn't quite fix the issue. It did, on a technicality, sort of put a band-aid on the issue. Um, by, essentially, Linux was not going, it was not loading in those bad blocks, whereas Windows had been loading them in. Um, now, unfortunately, the issue came back in full force, you know, like, like six months later or something, um, because I really did not do the correct solution at that time. And the correct solution would have been, you know, uh, go into Memtester, uh, figure out where the bad bits actually are, and then just set up a kernel parameter uh, telling Linux not to load them in, right? That's the actual solution, or one of the various actual solutions. Honestly, maybe I should have just cashed in on the warranty. That really didn't even occur to me. I mean, I was just a kid. I didn't, I didn't even think of that. Um, but anyways, so I thought, you know, Ubuntu had fixed my issue, um, but I really didn't like how GNOME looked. Um, so then I had, I had been looking up, you know, a little bit about Linux and a little bit about the different uh, variations of Linux. I thought, you know, distro was the same thing as desktop environment at the time. You know, I thought they were connected. I didn't realize it wasn't the same thing. So I had seen some posts talking about Arch and um, essentially saying it, you know, it's better. Um, so, and I saw, you know, people had Arch with KDE installations and I saw KDE looked a little bit more like Windows and I wanted something uh, that looked like Windows. So I figured, okay, let me install Arch and KDE. Um, and of course I installed it in five minutes and I've been an Arch master ever since, no, I'm joking. Um, it took me like nearly a week to get a working install. Um, I went through multiple failed installation attempts because I was literally just typing in commands without understanding at all what I was running, you know? Um, cause I had no knowledge of computers. I had never used a command line in my life. Um, I was literally just, you know, sort of reading and then trying to type it in and try to, you know, hoping that it would work. Um, and finally I had gotten a working installation. Now, if you've ever, you know, installed any sort of, 
uh, Linux distro that's like, you know, a scary black box sort of installation. And especially if it's taken you like multiple days, um, it's really nice when you finally like boot it up and you can log in as root. And, you know, it's funny looking back because now I sort of view the Arch installation process as really straightforward, right? Um, like, I mean, I would say I probably could just do it by memory, right? I mean, uh, maybe I need to, you know, double check on the uh, time zone uh, syncing commands. I, I don't know if I have those memorized, but, um, you know, it's straightforward to me now. Um, then back then it was, you know, so hard. So I sort of, I have compassion for people who find the arch installation, at least their first couple times doing it really hard because I had, you know, zero knowledge of any of that sort of stuff. So anyways, I finally got it installed. Um, and I had KDE, I put KDE on it, KDE booted up fine, it was great. Um, and then I went to plug in the laptop back to my external monitor because I had, for the duration of the install process, I'd unplugged it. Um, and I went to plug it back in and of course the external monitor was just a black screen. Um, and this sort of goes back to how Nvidia and Linux notoriously do not w play well together. Uh, back then it was even worse than it is now and um, I actually had the laptop version of the card too. I, I didn't even have the normal desktop version that everybody else had but I you know spent like a week trying to figure out first of all what the issue was because I didn't immediately know um, and then trying to figure out okay reading logs uh, you know typing in solutions that other people had for like similar issues. Finally finally I got it working and I had my first you know real Linux installation going. Um, I, I like to say Ubuntu I mean I like to say Arch was my first real distro because I only used Ubuntu for like a couple days so I, I like to claim that Arch was my first distro. I guess you can decide whether it was or it wasn't but anyways I finally got that Arch install working and of course you know it took me multiple years before I felt, you know, a lot more comfortable in the command line and like with the various aspects of my system and actually understanding things. But um, I wanted to offer, you know, a couple takeaways, uh, I guess for new users, but I guess maybe really for anybody. Uh, the first thing I want to say is there's no correct reason to use or to install Linux, right? Um, obviously, I had kind of a misinformed reason, like I had kind of a dumb reason because I thought uh, that Linux would just magically fix the memory, uh, bad blocks in my memory, even though, you know, it's a hardware issue and Linux is not just magically going to be a solution. It, it was just, if anything, a band-aid on it. Um, I think most people usually have more of a uh, thought out reason, you know, maybe privacy related or maybe they don't care about privacy at all and they just want to rice their desktop, right? Either, either is fine, right? Um, but there's so many different reasons for somebody wanting to install and use Linux. So I think it's worth keeping in mind, you know, maybe there isn't really a correct reason. And I guess if anybody out there does have sort of a, a, as dumb of a reason as I initially had, then uh, I don't know, feel seen, I guess. Um, but anyways, I also wanted to say there's also no correct trajectory. You know, once you've started using Linux, right, I kind of, as you might have gathered, sort of felt, I don't want to say pressured, but I definitely thought, you know, Arch is the best distro at first, uh, just because I'd seen people saying that. So I thought, you know, okay, I need to end up at Arch. I need to ultimately install Arch. And, um, as you probably know, right, I now still, I prefer Arch-based distros, uh, but I have, you know, actual reasons for why I prefer them now. I, I didn't, I'm not just, you know, assuming Arch is better for some reason. There's no, you know, best distro or like objectively superior distro, right? So I guess don't fall for the meme. Um, I also wanted to say though, uh, be patient with yourself as you're learning Linux, right? If you're, especially if you're very new and um, you're having to spend, you know, days troubleshooting stuff because um, that was me for years, right? For like at least the first couple of years, um, issues would take me, you know, days or even a week to troubleshoot. And um, luckily now, you know, in the past few years now, I haven't had any sort of like actual system issue that took me more than a day or so to figure out just because the more sort of experience you have with your system, the more uh, globally applicable knowledge you get, right? Because a lot of things interplay with each other. So once you understand one thing, it might come back to play somewhere else later. So it's, you know, it's just a matter of time and just being patient and eventually you'll learn it better. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, people say if you are trying to learn sysadmin stuff, right? Uh, instead of just using Linux on a server, just install it on your personal computer and you'll, uh, you'll start to learn the concepts faster. Um, but anyways, uh, I guess it's starting to get kind of, kind of raining. So 
Uh, it was, it's been drizzling, but it's picking up a little bit. So I figure this is probably the end of the video for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this kind of a story. I, I probably have more similar, like sort of dumb Linux stories to share, uh, many of which being typo related. So uh, be careful if you type sudo. <laughs> Any, well, be careful if you type anything, but be very careful if there's a sudo in front. Uh, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this story. Um, and I also wanted to say, if you are in the U.S. and celebrated Thanksgiving, I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving with your friends and family. Uh, anyways, I will see you next time. Peace!